Hi, and welcome to the introduction demo for BNG on the ASR 9K. My name is Hendo Tujis, and I'll be showing you an IP subscriber session setup, the verification of that subscriber, the ability to modify session parameters of this subscriber, and in particular, show you the use and operation of Parameter Ask QoS. The network for this setup looks like this. We have a PC here on the left side that we are connecting to right now. It is uh, connecting to a CPE who is having a single link into a switch which will have a bundle Ethernet or Ether channel terminating on the 9K BNG. The 9K BNG will do DHCP proxy towards the DHCP server here on the right and also there is an RTSP server that will be able to do video streaming towards the client for us. The network co is completed by this uh, RADIUS and COA web portal over here so the 9K BNG will have access to that web portal in order to do dynamic reconfigurations of the subscriber session here on the 9K BNG. We can do the command show subscriber session all in order to see all the active sessions on the device. Currently we have only one IP session over here. So the interface is here bundle ethernet 100.2.ip1. This is kind of the equivalent of a virtual access interface in iOS. This identifies that we are coming in on bundle ethernet 100 sub interface 2 and this is the first IP session arriving on this bundle Ethernet. We can append the keyword detail here in order to get some more details of the subscriber. Detail output of the show subscriber, we can see a couple of things here that are interesting. We can see here the option 82 information as well as the accounting session ID which is important for the COA operations that we're going to do. Uh, the MAC address of the subscriber and one integral part of the whole BNG solution for the 9K is the use of control policy language over here. This allows me to modify or trigger on different events in uh, of the session's lifetime based on a particular event. In this case, an event session start event I triggered on and that, that event happened at this particular time and date and a session start for an IP subscriber is the reception of a DHCP discover. You can see here that I have activated a dynamic template that is like the base configuration for each session that is hitting this control policy. Kind of the same thing like a virtual template from iOS. Next I try to authorize the subscriber, say for instance based on the MAC address or option 82 info and I send it off to Radius which I deliberately let fail and because the authorization failed over here the authentication status is unauthenticated. Let's look at the dynamic template real quick. Show run dynamic template for a type IP subscriber and name IP sub. You can see here that I'm in number to a particular loopback interface that is for the IP address and the routing and also this particular ACL is being applied to the subscriber. Let's see what that does. We can ping, we can also access a web portal on a particular server and for the rest everything is being denied. So that means that I should be able to say for instance ping this particular address but I should not be able to tell that to it. Indeed, that fails. You okay. can also verify the uh, access list uh, usage. And here you can see that my subscriber interface indeed has these two ACL supplied as what I expected. In order for us to watch some video, we need to log on via a web portal. So I go to the web portal, page is pulling up, and here you can see that this is our IP address. We see here some detail from the subscriber interface and if I would log on now by means of a username and password this will be sent via the web portal with a COA request to the 9k who in turn will use that info for a radius request. This logon was successful. Alright, well let's look at the subscriber now. The access list should no longer be applied to the subscriber and that is correct. In fact, you know, like radius returned me a permit all access list and I can verify that by means of this command that really the perm all access list is now applied towards the subscriber. If we were to go back into the subscriber details we can now see that the change stay to uh, authenticated and here we can see that the session received some new attributes from radius via a COA request and the last result of that was an acknowledgement which we already saw via the web portal also. At this point I should be able to watch some video so let's open the stream. And here you can see that the video is playing nicely. We should also be able to verify the QoS policy that is residing on the subscriber session. Show policy map interface bundle Ethernet 100.2.ip1. And here you can see that I have a basic QoS policy applied. It's an hierarchical QoS policy uh, with a parent class default. There is a triple play VoIP class in there as well. 
and a regular class default underneath the child that is currently transporting 500k and that is probably for the video stream that is going on right now. If I were to start a file download by opening this file share, providing our credentials, and I'm going to take this large file and drop it here on my desktop. You can see that the video is starting to suffer from this file download that I'm having going on at the same time. So in order to restore the video quality, I can leverage this parameterized QoS in order to create a video class or insert a video class on my particular session by pressing the button on the portal. While we are waiting for the screen update, you can see now that the session, uh, the video quality is uh, improved significantly. If we were to check back again on the QoS, we can see here that we still have about 1.5 meg worth of traffic in the parent class. But now we have here a class video that is transporting our dedicated video over here. I can show it again by going back to the portal and removing the video class, which then should cripple back our video instantly. And that's what you see happening over here. All right, that's great. That is all working then. I'm applying back the video class to my QoS profile and the video should restore on the next frame update. There you have it. All right, that's great. One other thing that is a part of the 9K BNG solution is that if you are looking at the bundle like this, show bundle, bundle Ethernet 100, I have currently two members in this particular bundle on gig on slot 0 and a gig in slot 1, both port 19. Because of the load balancing, I'm only using one of these two members in the bundle to transport my subscriber traffic. Let's look at which one that is. Well, that is clearly the member of GIG0119 that is transporting all my video traffic and it, the other member is uh, rather idle. I can go in to the switch right now. and that is the switch that um, is sitting over here. And if we're going into enable mode, we can look at the two members. That is probably gig zero two then, yes it is. And if I were to switch off this particular member, you will see some logging messages on the 9K telling it that the, be, uh, that the member will get out of service. And let's look at what happened you can see here that the video quality is not suffering from this bundle member failover at all. So this is a quick demonstration of the 9K BNG solution. Thank you for watching my introduction to the ASR 9K BNG solution and I'll see you on the next recording.